the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, dear faithful in Christ, today we celebrate the 23rd Sunday after Pentecost. We uh, have just a few Sundays left to conclude, to finish the liturgical year and to enter in the new liturgical year of uh, Advent. The Holy Mother the Church invites us for these last Sundays, already two Sundays ago, to reflect upon the graces we have received. Did we apply it in our life? Did we make it fruitful? Did we uh, accept the graces uh, Christ uh, gave us, merited for us? And so it is uh, to say, to, to, make, uh, to make accounting, to make a closure, to, to close the accounting and just to, to weigh what we have done good and what not. Also, it's not to despair, but to have then the resolution to improve uh, in a very concrete way uh, to, uh, to, to destroy everything which is uh, not uh, possible to unify with God. And today we listened to St. Paul, his writing to the Philippines, Philipp Philippines where he uh, essentially um, asks them that they should be a good example and they must uh, not uh, follow the bad Christians because the bad Christians their God is their stomach that means all their concupiscences of the eyes, of the flesh and of the life and they are slaves of this but we must give and uh, follow good examples and St. Paul continues and reminds that there are many uh, opportunities to work in the church by teaching and by other works but the good example is the best one because it's the most complete and, and uh, integral way to profess the proper faith Furthermore, St. Paul uh, exhorts to remain faithful even though there are so many who uh, deviate from the faith, who just use their faith as an excuse to do all evil things they are doing. No, Although the world is going uh, bad, although the society don't have any, any morals, although the, the dressing is horrible, we must live according to the teaching of Christ and we must be faithful to it. Further he says that we must have a great hope and a living desire to uh, align us with God for all eternity. We must, to have, we must have a desire to see Christ coming back in order to make justice and to get his justice for all eternity, that he is praised for all eternity. And in the end, St. Paul uh, reminds 
certain uh, persons who were collaborating and who were helping him. And this is valid also today, dear faithful, that the teaching church has, have, has, has a, a need of people who work for them, who dedicate them in teaching, in, in all other kind of uh, maintaining the, the, all the, the actions, all the deeds, all the facilities, all the liturgical functions in, in the way that they help organizing it, not in the way as it is happening in the modern church of the Second Vatican Council, which is not the Church of Christ, where the lay people do the job of the priest, which is ex exclusively for the priest uh, preserved, and then all the other works are not done. No, the priest must do what he must do. And then the lay people have uh, thousands of ways to uh, participate actively, to make flourishing the mystical body of Christ, that means the Church. In the Gospel of today, St. Matthew, we listened to the healing of the, or the, of the, of the woman who has, uh, uh, who suffered of blood loss and we have the, the resurrection of the uh, daughter of a nobleman and it was it will it is explained and then Jerome says so that the woman suffering of uh, blood loss represents the Gentiles the daughter of the nobleman represents the synagogue of the uh, uh, Hebrew people, of the Jewish people. And Jesus Christ, as he himself a uh, few times says, he has come just to, for, the, for them, for the chosen people. But as we know, his people, they rejected him. They rejected him further. They mistreated him. They put him to death. They killed him. In this way, Jesus Christ, God, he, through his apostles, uh, went through in, the, in the world to convert the pagans. The Gentiles and so the Gentiles uh, got to know the faith and converted in millions and millions and then it is said in the end of times there's also the hope for the Jewish people who were uh, time ago the, uh, the people of God and the commentaries say that we should also pray for the conversion of, uh, the, of, the, of the Jews. That they uh, accept that Christ is the one promised in the entire uh, Old Testament. That it is Him, the descending from God, Father, and uniting himself with human nature in order to fulfill Holy Scripture, in order to save human mankind. Let us pray, and the true Church does pray for the conversion of the Jews. It is the, the modern Church who does not have the love for the next. This Christian charity is not present in Umbergoglio or all those who are 
together with him, because if it would, they would certainly pray for the conversion, because it is our greatest desire, having the truth of Christ to do mission. That's the life of the Church. The mystical body of Christ, the Holy Mother of the Church, always, in the whole history, did everything to propagate the faith out of charity, to bring this truth to the next. And so it was brought in the whole world. And then in the end, my dear faithful, because we are still, we are, <laughs> we just began in the uh, month of November, where we pray for the, the uh, faithful departed, where we pray for family members who uh, died in the last year, in the last years. We pray that they will soon come uh, to eternal happiness. And when we do so, we have hope. And therefore, we, I would like to consider just one aspect of hope as described by uh, St. Thomas Aquinas in his Summa, in question 17, in the, in the second part of the second book, where he principally describes that the hope is a virtue. And then later he says, it's a theological virtue because it has God as its object. But first, he says, he explains principally, a, a good human act is corresponding to a human virtue, the human virtue. And this is a subject to a rule or a measure. And as much the action is derived in an adequation, in an alignment to this uh, rule, to this measure, it is good. Human acts have two measures. The first is the next uh, and the natural one, and this is the reason, reasoning. The second measure is supreme and is transcendent, and that's God. That means every human act which aligns to reason and or to God is good. And now, the hope of which we speak now, the virtue of hope, is an alignment uh, to God. It's an act uh, towards God uh, expecting something. Because the something, was the uh, Ill object, is the, uh, an eternal good. It is the uh, eternal life. And this eternal good uh, we consider as hard but as possible to, to achieve. And we can achieve those uh, eternal good in two ways. Directly through us or through the means of others. When we talk about the hope as a virtue, a virtue who has the object to desire the eternal love, we consider this through the help of God. Why? Because we have as subject uh, excuse me, as object, the, an eternal good, the eternal happiness. And this eternal good desire needs an eternal virtue, which comes from someone who can give something uh, 
uh, uh, infinite because the eternal happiness is something infinite and it needs an infinite hope in, in him who can give it. And this is God and God alone. And he, St. Thomas, uh, responses then also that those kind of hope we can have just in God and not in man. It's not possible because we hope something uh, infinite and eternal. What we can hope from the man is, as a second mean, that we through the man can sanctify us and can reach to this uh, eternal happiness. Therefore, dear faithful, let us have this just, uh, this just uh, uh, order in our life to, to know principally my first and foremost hope is the eternal happiness in heaven. And this specifically I can ask just from God. And then I have all the means and those are secondary uh, 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 objectives I can use in order to. So it is submitted to the final uh, destination. And this way we have to consider our whole life. Is it good that I do this and this action? Does it submit to the final? Then I can do it. If not, then I not. Let us have, dear faithful, this desire that all our actions, our deeds, our thoughts uh, correspond with the final destiny, the beatific vision of God, and that we have the correct use of the intermediate means. Let us ask all this um, graces, especially through our Blessed Lady, but then also through all saints. We are still in the octave of all saints. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, blessed be Jesus and Mary, now and forever.